everyone, and welcome to the What If Roundtable. The real what if is the friends we made along the way. I'm Master Coex, and joining me, as always, are Sophie B. Hello. And Habarok. Hello. Well, as um, well, I was about to say what the today is also, but Yashbek Gurry comes in with a hundred dollar super chat. Wow, thank you so much, dude. It's my birthday. It's my birthday, and I had, I had a, I got like two dozen cupcakes, and it was glorious. And I had pecan pie yesterday. It's crazy. And now I've, and now Philly got me a really lovely Himalayan salt lamp with a scented candle thing on the top, which is fantastic. So. Now my, my office now smells like cranberry, and I know it's too early for Christmas, but I don't care. It's been a it's been a crazy month, and it's my birthday, and I should have candles the way I want my room to smell. And don't forget, I am champion Christmas. <laughs> so, Damn it, Parker! If I want to have pictures of Spider Man and cranberry in my office, so will be it. <laughs> no, I shan't. It's Christmas. <laughs> mm. But anyway, thank you all so much for coming right now. And this is the What If Round Table, where your ideas and suggestions for potential what ifs in the future basically could then become a reality. Because I believe in the wisdom of crowds. Meaning that the crowds out there do come up with some very good ideas, collectively. But yeah, you can leave a super chat as a means to support the channel. And get your really, really good suggestions in as well. It really does help support the channel. And we always take notes. And our lovely moderators are here as well as well as Sophie and have. So let's get the ball rolling with Yash's <laughs> contribution. Saying, happy birthday, Master Co. I have a spoilery what if pitch, but if you check Twitter, you probably know what I'm talking about. What if the most controversial decision in Super became the best idea? I have a Cliff Notes version of events which I can email. Happy birthday again. Oh, thanks, Yash. Yeah, do definitely send those Cliff Notes in the email, but um, a controversial decision. I won't, I won't actually say specifically what it is, but I imagine right now it's all the hubbub about chapter 65. No spoilers, by the way. But all I'll oh, say... Oh, I am, I am very lost on this account, so yeah. I have no idea what's being talked about. <laughs> well, there you go. So you won't get anything from Soph. But Hav and I, we've been lamenting about this. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to like record a little bit to camera, which will express my feelings about all of this. Because it's not only just about the leaks, it's also about, um, it's also just in general about the chapter and stuff. But we haven't had it yet, but I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> uh, but Yash, basically, uh, I'd say that's a decision. I would probably say forgetting the talisman inside uh, the jar in the time machine. That was a controversial decision. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of things. Let's just say that. What would you say has been like a controversial decision? In Dragon Ball chapter. In, to many people bringing back Fr Frieza, to, the, to those people who don't like Frieza, I like Frieza, but even I had problems with it initially. And I can imagine that overexposure to that character may be problematic. I feel that he got enough good scenes to kind of cement himself into that, but that might be pretty controversial. And another controversial decision in Super that uh, would be the, the non-closure of future trunks really. oh yeah mm. of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah we just erase the we just erase the whole timeline um, but, we, but we don't give you the whole wave of the situation i agree on that point i'd also say that controversial decision wise the 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 choices on who was getting to come to the tournament of power was fairly controversial especially mm -hmm. once you actually see what all everybody got to contribute both manga wise and anime wise yeah so. no definitely and uh yash basically was saying what if the thing in chapter 65 was actually the best idea well it depends really because geekdom's video said that the leaked pages were from the first eight uh pages of chapter 65 and that was apparently a big twist in page nine so i don't know what it might be but it better be a darn good twist and then it'll be basically you know it'll be like barney and the Simpsons. This better be the best tasting beer ever. You got lucky. <laughs> It'd be basically just like you and the collective DB fandom. You got lucky. You got lucky, Toyotaro. But yeah, basically, you know, it's something along those lines. Anyway, our uh, what if uh, our super our super chats proper begin with Margaret Evans. What if Bomber went back in time instead of Trunks? Um, 
Imagine if she went back in time instead of Trunks, it might be a little bit more difficult to try and explain who she was. But I can imagine she'd probably like say, Oh, I'm a distant relative of the of Volma from the future, like way off I the am, future. I am Rulma. Mm. <laughs> uh, could you could you imagine if she attempted to like impersonate her own quote unquote daughter? <laughs> Trying yeah. to pass herself off as younger than she is, yeah, saying then, that yeah. she's she's Bulla from the future, but it's actually just Bulma. Yeah, in her late thirties and stuff like that, <laughs> because it's just like, and then the Bulma in that present time, they basically have a, a sad off to say, "You're like twenty years older than me. How can you be older? How can you be younger than me?" <laughs> it's like that's not. Or, wait, 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 wait! Your timeline doesn't add up. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, it's like yeah. But, and, and and future Bulma is like work with me. You know how we are. Yeah, and Goku does say that in terms of like whomping Frieza, probably not. She'd have to train a lot for that to work. Yeah. Uh, so it would... she probably wouldn't even come back to 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 do the whole whomping of Frieza. She would have probably just let the Frieza aspect play out because uh, it, it, implicitly nobody. As far as we're aware, you know, n nobody died during the fighting with Frieza. No. If they did, it was probably somebody like, you know, like Yamcha or something like that, you know? I'm pretty sure um, we don't even know if Goku of the cold or, or if cold went, that, and, went down. This is and, and interesting. And, so. Cool. Yeah, and, and and I mean Goku himself even said like if things got real risky, he'd have abandoned ship and just and just basically instant transmissioned to to Earth to deal with Frieza and Cold. So um she probably wouldn't have bothered going to that section of the timeline in order to in order to do all of that. She mm. would have probably been um she would have probably shown up after, you know, closer to when Goku was supposed to arrive on the planet. Right. Yeah, I, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that does make sense. Yeah, yeah. Trunks was just being a dirty, dirty show off. Mm. <laughs> APC. How did Gine end up getting classified as a fighter? I always assume thanks to the Broly movie that Saiyans were assigned a type at an early age and it should have been obvious. Yeah, I think it was like that. I think she probably got... Because uh, according to the law, it's like Gine got um, kind of almost like drafted into Bardock's elite squadron for some reason, even though her power level was quite low. Um, and it was quite clear that she wasn't working out, so I think Bardock, for her own safety, just basically said, you're not cut out for this kid. By the way, I understand that it's like that they sometimes give the, you know, the weaker kids chance because some of them actually, you know, improve over the time. Oh, of course. Like, like I think, I, 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 I think that, uh, I, I don't know if I'm not, you know, creating that with my mind, but I recall reading somewhere that this might have been the case, and Raditz might have been a sim similar situation, you know? Hmm. Like, well, and you got to remember that if they're, if they're, if they're aware of the fact that 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 they have the potential to get Zenkai boosts on missions, right? And they're aware of the fact that that could at least make them useful enough, you know, if they if they get enough experience, then they might not be opposed to putting a low power fighter in a squad for a little while and then seeing whether or not they work out and if they don't they just reassign them to something else whether it be you know working on the ships or whether it be working in the cook houses mm. uh, keep yeah. in mind that even a weak saiyan is stronger than most of the races in the universe that's true. something that we yeah. to overlook that is true that is definitely true patrick will piccolo be important in what if goku beat roshi he knows kano can infused with several namekians Hmm. Good question. Well, P Piccolo is quite useful in that in that series. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, he's going to be quite quite useful. But like, I don't want to tell, tell too much. Like, I have, I have certain plans for the next saga. I think. I think we haven't premiered the last chapter that 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 that, that we have yeah, that's wrote not, yet. So, that's due so. on the twenty seventh. That's going to come out on the twenty seventh. Yeah. So. Yeah, so 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 again, like next chapter is de de dealing with Goku's fight with Frieza. So stay mm -hmm. tuned, stay tuned. You stay tuned, stay tuned. Um, Papara, um, oh, it's that Papara. Boo like food, cause it is yummy. Boo will put you in Boo's tummy. Boo can have <laughs> all the rice. All Boo has to do is grab a ball. <laughs> That's Sorry. my good night, Steve. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, good night, everybody. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Paparazzi. Good night, everybody. Mwah. Good night, everybody. <laughs> uh, they are back. Have you yeah. have you seen the advert? Yep. They are back. Yep. I reanimated them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Paparazzi has an actual question. What if Kami gave his position to Roshi, knowing he'd only last a week, so he could directly help with the Saiyans? So, like, if Kami somehow just, like, gave Roshi, like, a, like almost made him, like, a, a temporary, like, a temporary, like, guardianship, you know what, you, he, Kami probably wouldn't know, because obviously his mind doesn't think that way, um, that basically, Roshi would use his powers to keep a close eye on the ladies. <laughs> it's like, there's this one particular lady who I think is in very grave danger. I must keep an eye on her 24 hours a day. Especially when she's in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's, and then Kami just has no idea. It's like, I don't really understand, but if we're being methodical, <laughs> then that count will be bad. <laughs> oh, I'm being methodical, all right, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, I'm yeah. keeping my eyes very open. <laughs> it's like, Kami's it's completely oblivious. <laughs> it's completely oblivious. Okay. You'd think he wouldn't be since he's been guardian yeah. for ostensibly a few hundred years. He'd have learned something about it by now. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be so funny. Like, after all this time, he's still so naive. It would be funny mm. tonight as heck. Cameron Heaton, <laughs> Sunday is my birthday. Oh, happy early birthday to you, Cameron, by the way. Happy and birthday. Yay, happy he, birthday. And he asks, what if Goku was born blind? Well, I think we've had this a few times, actually. Yeah. Uh, basically, it just means that Goku would... Goku probably would be able to overcome it because you can sense energy through vibrations in the air as well as just general perception. So he probably would have adapted his skills to be able to just use, like, his other senses. So he yeah, could easily yeah. adapt that. And since the, and I I think he's you know like he would have a more creative way of fighting and 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 you and you know utilizing his you know disadvantage as an adv actual advantage and I think we would have you know like like uh, in the dub we, we would have a, a silly catchphrase or something like Goku you're such a daredevil. <laughs> Yeah, oh, just like a little nod because, you know, Marvel superheroes, because, you yeah. know, Toriyama, uh, all that kind of stuff. All right, Paparazzi. What if World Super Strongest was the next movie? Gohan and the humans have to protect Mark from an evil scientist who believes him to be the strongest. Oh, wow. Well, to be honest, again, <laughs> based on what's happening in the Super manga, a rehash of a, proper, a previous Z property... Not the most tactful thing to do. <laughs> it's not and the most mysterious Doctor W. Doctor W. Seriously, who might it be? It's it's Doctor Wee Ro. It, it, it's it's it's, it, 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 it's very clearly Doctor Wily, and he intends to yeah. force the Z fighters to face the robot masters. It's it's no. like it's like a, oh oh. God, so no, so, uh, Sophie, Sophie, the official pronunciation is. Dr. Wowie. Uh, Dr. Wowie. Dr. Wowie. <laughs> Dr. Wowie. <laughs> oh, but, okay. But it would be funny. Like, everyone thinks that Mark is still the strongest after all this time. And, like, it'd just be a little... It'd be a fun little exercise. It'd be a good episode, let's just say that. Anna Rowan. What if the Xenomorphs and the, the Yautja existed in Dragon Ball or Z? Imagine the types of Xenomorphs to result from possible hosts like Namekians or Saiyans. And the tech y Yautja could have. Imagine Cell with their DNA. Man, oh, I, I'm just trying to think of like what it would be like, like Goku dude, versus Predator. I, if, if 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 the Yautja were in uh in in the Dragon Ball Z universe and stuff like that, they would have probably discovered key manipulation by now. Especially if they're supposed to be some of the universes like Greatest Hunters. I could imagine that they would probably find Saiyans to be such like such an incredible prey that they would actively be like hey the last saiyans in the universe are on planet earth we need to get in on this by the way by the way guys, in, <laughs> and you'd in, in, case, in case some of you don't know the outia is the predator species if, you, mm -hmm. if somebody didn't know so it's like what it's like what i thought they were called predators <laughs> 
<laughs> that seriously, that's what I thought they were called. I didn't know they were called Yaucha. <laughs> I, uh, okay. All right, Gobi. What if Black ate the bodies and souls of a multitude of Gokus like rare candies, entrapping them in a state of "and I must scream" while reaping off the power? Oh. Oh man, that that's that's dark. That's yeah. dark. That'd be something you do in Dragon Ball Z, like in prime time stuff, not in Super. Like, yeah, that'd be a really evil Goku. That's like, <laughs> oh, that's that is. Uh, is it uh, Junji Ito? Is it like, uh, like they really like a horror manga type of uh, concept? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That would be <clears throat> proper. If you gave Junji Ito the keys to Dragon Ball, that's what he'd do. Pretty much. Like, oh, you think <laughs> Moro eating 7-3 was dark? Get a load of what Ito can do. Like, oof. And I emphasize Ito. And, yeah, oh, and, my. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but speaking of that, I was recently reminded about a scene that I totally blanked out when uh, when Super Boo forced Vegito to eat him. So that was also some sort of Grim reminiscent. He does that twice because he does that. He does yeah. that to um. He does that to the guy as well. The guy who shot the um. Yeah. What's his name? I can never remember his name. Uh, whatever. But mm. the guy who shot B and and killed Hercule oh, and Zandt, stuff like Van that, Zandt. like that's how. Yeah, Van Zant. He he did yeah. that to him too. Yeah, I know. I know. But like, I I forgot about the Russo bit, and it's like, Toriyama, why? Why? Though? Why? Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, it is it is appropriately horrifying. So I mean, yeah. if you want to show your villain is scary, yeah, 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 yeah. Like when you guys ask about the scary stuff on the last run, uh, this this thing. Uh. Mm. Mm. All right. Next up is Nick Wolf. Oh, uh, wishing me a happy birthday. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. What if Goku brutally yamchered Moro because Ultra Instinct can be mastered, not not controlled? That's why he leaves with Oob, teach the margin control. Um, okay, this isn't connected to the spoilers or anything like that. This is just basically hypothetical in general. Uh, if basically Goku did this and was just like wanting to do this in a more barbaric way other than the Galactic Patrol would do, then I think it'd be very out of character. But also showing how dangerous and very unpredictable the Mastered Ultra Instinct is. Like, you know, Goku's mind is actually being put on the back burner, and Goku's body is there to deck you in the schnoz for good. So, I think... Honestly... I mean, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, there is that whole discussion between the Toyotaro's editor in that interview about, like, the whole wordplay with uh, Ultra Instinct being selfish form. Mm. So, that would kind of fit, like, again... If that would if that would lead to something darker, we yeah. wouldn't mind that much. Yeah, I mean, if it turns if it ends up being actually something very potent, then yeah. okay, I, I'll, I'll wait for the manga chapter to come out. Yeah, though. we'll see yeah. how it goes. From Be, there. Yeah, before we start sc 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 screaming and st tossing stuff. Yeah, before we start people. properly reeing. Yeah. So yeah, all right, Mean Crank. What if Yamcha went Super Saiyan minus one? Also, hat bat. Oh, thanks, Bean. Um, okay. So, Super Saiyan minus one. It'd be basically you make yourself weaker. No, I have a better idea for Super Saiyan mi minus one. People want him to be weaker, but I have... If Super Saiyan minus one makes you weaker, but you also make everyone around you weaker, you drain energy from other fighters. Oh, so basically are... like a sphere of influence. Yeah, your sphere of influence. You are, you, you are a, you, you know, you are a black hole fighter, basically. Oh wow! So it's basically you said, Yamcha. You seriously think you can beat I, the Great? Well, that's what you think. Come at me! And then basically, he the, there's this powerful punch. But as soon as it gets to Yamcha, it like, what? What is this? <laughs> you forget. Any time an opponent comes near me, they become as weak as a kitten. And I, I'm as weak as a dog, a wolf. That just reminds me of uh, Gaku and Alice, where where the main character's ability that nobody really understands until like until the very end, they kind of reveal what her ability is. Is that um, she negates other people's powers, and so she's got like one of the most 
powerful powers, but nobody wants to like de- have her develop it because it totally it totally makes her OP against everyone else in the school. <laughs> I mean, that would be the best power up to give you Amtrak. Come on. Mm. No, it's certainly very subversive. <laughs> yeah. And Ice Two Five Nine coming in with a hundred dollar super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. Saying happy birthday, Masako. Happy you have muffin cake. Well, I got 24 cupcakes, and they're all different with, like, Biscoff biscuits, there's Oreos, there's Milky Bars, there's Rolos and Cadbury's. It's oh, good. It's so good. I, I guys, have... guys, we saw a photo of those muffins. They look like, you know, different subcultures of muffins. Like, they have their own culture. Like, yep. you have Gothic muffins, you have, you know, joke muffins. You have your nerd muffins. You have all sorts of muffins. Yeah, to be honest, if you want to check them out, they're my latest. They're my latest thing on Instagram, and this isn't a cheeky plug. Well, okay, it is a cheeky plug a little bit, but it's, it's the a first one flag. on there. They are very, very good. They are very, very good. Like, three hundred and eighty likes. I only posted them an hour ago. Anyway, Ice asked, "What if Goten was self-aware, like Yamcha in the fan-made manga?" Okay, so basically, if Goten was self-aware, like. Nobody suspects Goten. It's like Goten is the str- basically the MVP, but everyone thinks that he's weak. And it's like, oh, Goten, he's such a little cinnamon bun. He would never do that. And then basically, Moro, yeah, it's like Goku Black meets Goten. No, Goten v Beerus. Beerus, like, Goten punches Beerus in the gut. Oh! You li- exactly. No one suspects the Goten. <laughs> So, question. So, the fan-made manga, are they referring to reincarnated as Yamcha? Yeah, so basically or it's is like the... self-aware. Yeah, okay. As in, like, Goten so... is aware of the meta. So, so he's aware of the meta. He knows what everyone's power level is at any given time. He knows how the future's gonna sort of play out, and he manipulates it according to his whim. I kind of like that concept, because nobody would ever... Yeah, it's like you said, nobody would ever suspect Goten. He's this... He's this cute little cinnamon bun, but in truth, he knows all of the secrets, exactly. and he'll be the most powerful. <laughs> exactly, and everyone is so ignorant about him that uh, he basically can, he holds all the cards. It's very, very good. Dark so, side of Goten has, is a pathway to many abilities. Some consider them to be unnatural. Uh, <laughs> can you can can can, uh, can you learn those powers? Not from a main character. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we need Jenna to, like, say, nobody suspects the Goten. <laughs> oh. All right, Gobi. What if because of the actions of an ancestor, Goku's family line was eternally cursed until he or one of his sons can finally break it? Okay. It would have to be, like, a very interesting curse, and they'd have to know about it. But maybe the curse is something like, uh, yeah, they can't, re- as soon as they try and reveal the curse, they then succumb to something very grave. And basically, they have to try and find out the curse through very roundabout means, or else they'll, be, they'll die. So, something along those lines. Ah, so, I mean, that could be something interesting. A little side plot, certainly. <laughs> mean Crank. What if, to get Gohan to train, Vegeta took on a supervillain nemesis role to combat Saiyan Man? <gasps> I can imagine Vegeta being that desperate sometimes. Like, at that one point, it crossed his mind as, like, <laughs> okay, so I gotta get a costume, and I got to like, yeah, you know, it's basically like dragon shorts, as in fight me. <laughs> it's something that we did with Na- uh, in what if Napa, but Napa did it <laughs> with with. So, with Andrew Go on, Sophie. So, so well, I was gonna say like he he would have to base it because like obviously Vegeta's not the kind of person who would probably be into media. He wouldn't know what villains were like in like comic books and stuff. So he'd be basing it on his real life experience. So he'd be like. Okay, who was the scariest person in my life? Well, other than my, uh, other than Frieza, maybe my father when I was a child. And he's my like wife. trying to come up with con concepts of like d- how to design his outfit. And so like he puts together this 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 villain persona that's like a mishmash of like Frieza and King Cold and King Vegeta. And, and, and with a little bit of Bulma thrown in. With a little bit of Bulma. Well, he'd have to get Bulma to help him design the no, thing. You know, you, you, you know who, will, who will help him with that? Goten and Trunks. That oh, would be God. <laughs> mm-hmm. they, feel, they feel bad for him, so basically, you know. Oh. 
right. Mean crush. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. uh, Nick Wolf says or Vegeta could get his villain ideas from Trunks, who oh. would be more familiar with comic yeah. book villains and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I just imagine Vegeta cosplaying, you know, the blue version of Android, Super Android 13. Oh, <laughs> yes, exactly, because he stole, because uh, 13 stole his do. <laughs> I kill him! Uh, I will kill him! That was such a random gag, but I think I, I think that's that's honestly one one of the funniest moments in in, in that, mm. that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, parody. Mean Crank, what if Juan Sanchez from the Garlic Saga was Krillin's very real evil twin? Um, I imagine, yeah, it's like, you know, Juan Sanchez is the confident, cocky trickster, whereas Krillin is the little, very, you yeah, know, very polite guy. It's like, all right, baby, you're coming up with Juan Sanchez! And it's like, and so basically, he ends up being the strong one. So it's like Krillin is the one when they're not all fighting, but whenever they come into the battles, it's actually Juan Sanchez. He's actually trying to like be almost like this kind of like morale booster for Krillin or something. That could be fun. Yeah. Nick yeah. Wolf, uh, Goku. Go on, go on, look, Krillin. What's your favorite food? It's like, oh, uh, it's like Waldor, Waldor salad. See. Taco! Oh, crap baskets. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Double baconator! Oh! <laughs> and I say, Goku, what's your favorite food? Favorite? It's him! <laughs> it's like, it's him! Favorite? <laughs> it's like, favorite? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cool uh, Super Shenron gave Zamasu GT Goku's body. <laughs> oh yeah, we had this last week. Um, it'd just be funny. Like Zamasu thinks that this body would have the power of a god, but it has no power at all. So it's like oh, he has gosh. all of this knowledge and all of this attacks, and this who doesn't even know how to process key, or at least barely can. So it'd be so funny. Like, this grandiose little child. I just I cannot do anything. I just love the thought of Kid Goku acting, acting as like m majestically big-headed as 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 Zamasu and so arrogant. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Someday, like someday, we'll, we will do either GT Zamasu Goku or original DB Zamasu Goku. Like this, this is going to be a one. Shot. <laughs> someday. And the thought. Of, and the movie. thought of the scene when he when he when he uh, kills Bulma is, is so less intimidating when it's Kid Goku. Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. <laughs> and Bulma, Bulma's like, seriously, you stole you stole Kid's Goku body. It's still a Goku's body. Yeah, get over with. What? Wait, you're not going to scream? You know, it's it's not fun that way. Mm. <laughs> Just, just kill me. Go, go on. Mm. You mortals are weird. <laughs> All right, Paparazzi. <laughs> what if there was already a margin race Dragon Ball Online style around on Earth since shortly after Boo was sealed? Okay, so like there was like all these little kind of like genie type things, like with less power, but they kind of are a lot more populated. That could be interesting. Like they then kind of like almost like combine with Boo when he's like older and stuff like that. So kind of like just these hidden genies or something like this. I mean, we know that they they are around after Boo, so... Mm -hmm. That is true. Gobi, continue from last week. What if Goku's bad karma was enough to move his Paragon till death status further down to barely Renegade? Well, yeah, I mean, <coughs> Goku seems to be descending towards making very unparagon like you know, choices in his life. Um, I imagine it can easily progress to that, really. As in, like... You know, all the stuff that he does is going to come, you know, have a comeuppance. Like, if the events of, like, the Tournament of Power and what's happening in the Moro arc at the moment don't really get through to him, it's going to come back to bite him in the bum in the next arc, I imagine. I mean, I mean, like, for me, Goku is, isn't is the Paragon or, or Renegade. It, 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 he's just a guy who wants all the achievements. Yeah, no, absolutely. He's totally, he's totally an achievement hunter, and he's, he's, yeah. he's the type of guy who, who, considering what he does with, uh, with Stensu Beans and stuff like that, he's basically the type of guy who would save Scum until he has the most enjoyable experience for him. <laughs> mm. no, no. Oh, absolutely. Totally. I could definitely see that. 
Okay. Uh, Gobi then asks again, what if Konkichi had been adapted as a main character in Dragon Ball with him learning magic and witchcraft and being accepted as an honorary Son family member? Konkichi. Oh. Wait, what? Konkichi, oh, isn't like the original Dragon Ball? Oh, it's a filler, uh, oh, yeah. filler character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Wow, that is obscure. Well... Yeah. If it's any consolation, it'd be, you know, a good having a fox 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 kid. Like wow, okay, that, that's a deep cut. It's a more It's an old reference. It's, it's an old reference, sir, but acceptable. Uh, it's a, it's an old reference, sir, but it checks out. Uh, it checks out. uh, uh, uh he even said it was a troll a troll thing, but okay, yeah, cool. You have more fox than animal people. Uh, Kaijukun would be very happy about that. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Gobi, again, what if Goten grew up to be a jukebox hero? Well, he would certainly have a very interesting career. Yeah, if he was giving up fighting, he could get into music, become a DJ. The DJ, DJ 10. DJ Go for 10. It's like, yeah. DJ Go for 10. I don't, I don't, I don't know what jukebox hero is referencing or referring to, so I cannot say. <laughs> Um, but oh, it's a song by Lou Graham and Mick Jones, so I think it's from the band Foreigner. Ah, uh, so again, pretty much, I see, yeah, you know, jam, jamming and stuff. EM79, gotcha. Happy birthday, Masako. Thanks, EM. He's got a couple. Will there ever be a part two of What If Raditz Never Landed on Earth? Maybe I need to really kind of look, give that a proper look. And what if Piccolo Jr. never existed? Well, if Piccolo Jr. never existed, the 23rd Martial Arts Tournament would have been basically the rematch between Ten Shinhan and, and uh, Goku. So, that pretty much would have been, it would have ended up just being the rematch. And that time, Goku winning. So, pretty much, it'd be an interesting one, but it wouldn't exactly be as spectacular, let's say. And, you know, it would certainly come back to haunt them later on in, it's not there to look after Gohan. So, I think we might have to play the sound subsequently. Uh, Yay, the sound. The, the birthday sound. sound. Yeah, we love the sound. There you go. Uh, so, Nick Wolf, Morrow. You can't beat me, lassie. I have an army. Fem Goku. We have a team of UI masters. Cue a Savage Breakfast Club beatdown. <laughs> oh, man. They all know Ultra Instinct against Morrow. Oh, man. That'd be fun. That would definitely be fun. Gobi. <laughs> What if Dragon Ball had a dream reality with its own mechanisms and designated deity or deities overseeing it? Well, we have a Supreme Kai of time. We can have a Supreme Kai of dreams. I mean, we could. Uh, I like it. I, like it. I uh, really like it. I do like tur it, yeah. Turns, Turns out that the Supreme Kai of dreams is uh, Sandman. From yeah. <laughs> he's he's the guy he's the guy from uh, uh what's what's his name's uh Neil 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 Gaiman, 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 uh, Gaiman Sandman yeah. <laughs> the Supreme Kai of Dreams. Mm. Oh boy, could you imagine <laughs> Corinthian in, in in Dragon Ball? Oh boy, that would be spooky. <laughs> mm. No, that's cool. I mean, we got a Supreme Kai. We got a Supreme Kai for all occasions. Yeah, and a, a Nightmare Lord as a as Ooh. a villain. And oh, Philly has done, uh, d gotten me a cocktail. What's in it? Uh, creme de fee. It's a similar to one you made before. Well, it's called creme de fee. Oh. Uh, a oh, well, thank you very much. You thank you. Hey, well, Philly. Yeah. You say hi. They all say Hello, hi. Hello, Philly. And she says hi as well. Uh, basically, she's provided me a birthday cocktail. It's um, Archer, so it's peach snaps, uh, creme de cassis, gin, and uh, yeah. And tonic water. Uh, I would make a joke about it being 11.30 in the morning, but you're in the UK. <laughs> it's half past seven here. So I'm, I'm having a cocktail. <laughs> so I'm having a cocktail for my... Why are you drinking gin? It's 11.30 in the morning. <laughs> no, I like me some gin. Absolutely. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Vandalia. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks, Vandalia. In a crossover with another abridged series he once did, what if Goku landed in the Leaf Village and joined one of the three-man squads? Oh, yes. Naruto abridged back in the day. Well, Goku probably would actually be very, very strong. He'd probably be like, you know, a proper... You know, a proper... Uh, not Genin. Oh. Top-tier top, top tier 
Jonin. Jonin. He probably would be like a Jonin. And the thing is, though, the definition of a ninja really is so loose in Naruto. Like, at first, you think it's very mm-hmm. stealthy, but then eventually, they just are so not subtle at all. And you just well, they're special forces agents that are that are basically sold. You know, they they have contracts that are sold like private military groups. So mm. so so they aren't they aren't ninja assassins per se, though some of them work that kind of job, especially in the Anbu. But it, it, it's more it's more that every ninja village is in fact a private military corporation, right. and they they contract out their 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 child soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but either way, I think if Goku were in it, he'd basically be a very powerful Jonin. He fit in right in quite nicely, and basically with Mike Guy, yeah, those two would get on like a house on fire. Oh gosh, man, I could just could you imagine the training sessions? <laughs> Mike Guy Sorry, and Rock Lee, Rock Lee so- and Mike Guy training with Goku would say, "Well, Mister Goku San, I'm Rock Lee, eh?" <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I can't believe I why I made Rock Lee a Canadian. <laughs> why did you make? Why did you? I make don't know. Stereotypically <laughs> Canadian. Sorry, I just... Apologies to all of our Canadian fans. Yes. Yeah. Also, 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 I just imagined a situation where you know you have, you have uh, uh, Vegeta in there, and you are not dealing with the average Joe Nin. <laughs> With your average journey. And also, yeah. this, this cocktail Philly's made, it is extremely drinkable. It's dangerously drinkable. Oh, God. Okay. okay. Well, it's a good thing I've had dinner, so I've had plenty of rice. I've had plenty of rice, so I, I should be fine, hopefully. I won't say anything I won't regret. Right. <laughs> right. Paparazzi, what if there was a colony of Saiyans on Earth who didn't take it over to stay under Freezer's radar? Totally plausible. I mean,. They say specifically that Earth is um, it's very specifically like a very backwater planet that is not very much on Freezer's influence. So there'd probably be plenty of planets like that. And I imagine although be- yeah. sorry, sorry, although they will probably snatch Goku because they would say a knife. Well, I imagine yeah, the more Saiyans the better, really. Yeah, and I imagine that that would totally make sense. Uh, the trickster. So theoretically, can the Grand Supreme Kai still be alive? Since it was Buff Boo who absorbed him and became Fat Boo, if someone were to go inside Fat Boo and theoretically take the Kai out there, can there be another Kid Boo? Well, not not necessarily Kid Boo per se, because that's Kid Boo was destroyed. But I imagine a big portion of what made Boo Boo, so it'd probably be more like he looked like Super Boo in a way, and he'd still be an innocent Boo. But I imagine because the Grand Supreme Kai and he had been fused together for so long, like millions of years. They're basically one and the same <clears> now, but the essence of the Grand Supreme Kai is still in there. So, yeah. It, yeah, it's rather part of his personality, like his super ego instead of, like, he be- he became, like, his super ego mm. in that sense. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's more like this. So, in a way, yes, the trickster is, the Grand Supreme Kai is alive and can now, as we know, manifest into his proper body. But, you know, he's intrinsically linked to Boo now, I think. Paparazzi, yeah. what if there was an educational video in the vein of traffic safety, Goku versus taxis? Oh, <laughs> well, God. Well, there is traffic safety. There is that video that I talked about. <coughs> Goku's traffic safety. Well, I think I think they're saying I think they're saying take that concept of a of a of a of a, of a video like that, but have it be Goku versus, versus taxes. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I pay my taxes one leg at a time. Yeah, he definitely does do that. So there you go. That's stupid. Very... You're stupid. <laughs> or am I just being correct? <laughs> mm. All right, Papa. I, I think I, I I think we'd wind up having like having like a gag like for Goku versus taxes. It would be Goku trying to like get to the taxes the whole time, but he never actually properly starts it because he keeps finding ways to distract himself. And then at the end of the episode, we find out that it's Chi Chi who does the taxes anyway, yeah, yeah, and she yeah. just kind of, and she just kind of says, "If you have trouble go doing your taxes, go go to go go to your local, you know, H and R Block or 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 use TurboTax or something." <laughs> yeah, 
Mm. Yeah, Chi Chi would be the one to deliver the PSA. Definitely. Yeah. But Papa Raichu, what if a super cooler's fifth form harnessed Demon Key instead of God Key like freezes? Uh, hmm. I mean, it'd be interesting. It would certainly bring in the whole Makayo Sheen thing element, um, like, because with Dark Demon Realms and stuff. So it'd certainly be making it very relevant towards, um, yeah. <laughs> It make it very relevant towards um, you know Dragon Ball heroes and stuff. And that man seven was uh, like I say, it just reminds me of uh, the idiot archive. Hello, John. What are you doing? I'm committing tax fraud. Cool. Okay. <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> Foolish mortals. <laughs> it's just like I love the idiot archive. You know. Oh, it's the, the TikToks and it's like, oh, you gotta look up idiot archive on YouTube. I love those animations. Where are my noggies? Sorry. Okay, Papa Podo. In timeline, where in timelines where Goku has an adoptive older sibling, would Raditz feel jealousy over being replaced? I imagine so. As in, like, you know, he'd probably be like comparing to, were they as good as a brother as me, Gagarot? I don't think so. It's like, but th that was an older sister. That still stands as an older sibling example. Were they better than me? Well, I don't really know, because I didn't really know you. <laughs> Answer the question, Kakarot! Yeah, they you were never better, ever had... shouting at me! What? Never ever had bro, bro like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. It's like... It's like... Ugh. Okay, Gobi. What if Pan had been born four to five years earlier? Okay, so if she was born like... During the Boo saga, like she'd just been born as soon as Margin Boo arrived. Uh, oh. That would be interesting. Like, you'd have that. Okay. Go on. Uh, real quick, real quick here. You realize that if she'd been born during the Boo saga, Gohan and Videl were still in high school. Oh, teenage no. pregnancies? Are we going to deal with this in Dragon Ball? Oh, no. Well, teenage pregnancy was very much a big issue in the 90s. You know? If that Victoria is Tor true. Toriyama was this? Be this could be, it could be yeah. topical. If Toriyama was very much on the nose or something like that. Or Gobi yeah. says a little bit after the Boo saga. Oh, okay. I thought you were training with that boy. <laughs> I didn't know it was that kind of training. It is that. It's like, well, it's like, the train was a little bit bigger, so, huh? oh, sweetie. It's like, it's like... Oh, God. <laughs> There's going to be a thing in DBZA. <laughs> like, oh, it's like, my at God. the end of Z, right? And basically, Hercule, um, what well, Mr. Satan, like, sees Pan. Hey, hey, Grandpapa. Oh, here comes a little disappointment. It's like, just because of GT. Because oh, no. GT joke. <laughs> Like, oh, here comes my oh. little disappointment. <laughs> like, that was very unfair. Yeah. All right. Harvest <laughs> Fang becomes a new uh, signs up as being a new a member. Uh, welcome to Master Like. Thank you, Heartless Fang. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. We are gonna have the cutoff point. Uh, you know, in about five minutes' time. So cutoff point is five minutes in terms of super chats. Thank you. And Red Dragon, that wasn't me who came up with that joke. That's the joke I remember that the guys came up with, just so you know. Um, okay, Papa Archer. <laughs> what if in an attempt to add black humor, Toriyama made Gohan lose an eye when the Z-Sword broke? Oof. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we already <laughs> had that last week. I think we did Why have did... that, but I think Kibito yeah. can heal. So I think Kibito would be able to heal it, but you would certainly have that moment where, like, Dokoro chan almost like Kibito just immediately heals it and then Go Gohan has a very you know lackadaisical reaction of just like dad I be careful next time You could almost have an <laughs> eye out again Just like something along I mean, way. I mean he can heal it, but can he regrow eyes? He's a Kai. He's a Kai attendant. So I think he probably could I think he probably could The somewhere man. What if Chi Chi had to take over the Oct King's kingdom and responsibilities? Oh man! What what responsibilities? Well, the thing is, though, she, well, she's like she's got yeah. the money. She's got the money, so that's enough for her. You know, as far as Toriyama's concerned. But you know, if she had to like do that, she'd probably be a very benevolent queen, like the Ox Queen. I mean, to be honest, <laughs> it probably would mean that she'd probably be able to have a bit more help in like you know having Gohan's tutelage, maybe actually having a kingdom and stuff like that. 
make you know go goku the the ox yeah the ox prince that'd be kind of cool so yeah i vegeta the prince of all saiyans oh hey you're a prince too i'm the prince of all oxen it's like that actually sounds kind of cool technically you're a technically you're a prince consort honey <laughs> Well, 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 what's I'm the difference? And I, no, I'm a prince and I can sort this out. You just do that, honey. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and I can sort it out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Gobi. What if Dragon Ball was like as Bobby? Wow, Bobby's world, huh? Now. That's an old cartoon. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Bobby's oh, World was, yeah. Oh, it had that's a name I haven't. Cartoon. That's a name I haven't heard for a long, long time. Oh, I know. It's a, it has a, it has a main guy with this kind of voice. Bada bing, bada boom. It's like it's just like yeah, dude, Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. Like yep. I remember we'll Howie Tori Mandel. Tori yeah, we we have Toriyama instead of Howie Mandel. Oh. Uh, oh my gosh. And Howie Mandel Tori, was Tori's the Muppet, Muppet Babies, right? I think Howie Mandel uh, was. I don't. I don't remember. He might have. He might have done a voice in oh, Muppet yeah, he Babies. Was, he was a, Either that uh, or Skeeter. somebody else. He was Skeeter. <laughs> and like, yeah, <laughs> Skeeter and Scooter. <laughs> That's it. Yes. Yes, that was it. That was it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, I. I don't really know. It's a little bit too obscure for me, Gobi. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, Heartless Fang, what if Capsule Court bought a planet from Frieza? What if we met a race of people who brought planets from Frieza? Well, yeah, it'd be nice to know who actually buys the planets. Because we don't really know <laughs> that. That's kind of... I responded to this in chat when the, uh, when the, when the question first popped up. Uh, planet flippers on DIY network. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, um, planet flippers on ZLC. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Oh, it's DLC. Basically, it's basically Frieza would be the Bobby Flay of the retail realtor world. As in, like, yeah, so you gotta you've gotta beat Frieza. Oh, oh yeah. gosh! Ah, oh, yes, the 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 obscure uh, species of real estate uh, estate is. Mm. No, it's Frieza real estate. <laughs> and seriously, whenever real I'm, estate. When, whenever I'm on a plane. Whenever I'm on a plane, I always watch Beat Bobby Flay. Because it's like, ah, oh, Bobby Flay, you're always with me when I travel. I hope, I, I, <laughs> seriously. It's like, that's whatever. It's that's like oddly specific. No, no, seriously, it's like, I, I always try and fly Delta whenever I can. Because, like, you know, because Delta does a lot of stuff from London to um, Texas. Um, but, yeah, I, yeah, Food Network stuff is always on there. I'm always, you yeah, know, it's always good to see. Uh, okay. Uh, Paparaccia. Marsh, you overthink End of Z. It was one day Beerus Weiss aren't there every day. Plus, the next step in Goku's training could be to take a student. Yeah, I know. I overthink End of Z, but it's just it's just really weird that... I, and yes, I know. It's just that there's no references to gods at all. And it, you just need to try and find a way of actually making it cohesive because they don't mention it at all. And they'd have to find some way of making that work. So it'd just be nice to just see whether it can actually have some kind of metaphysical... Con conundrum or something like that, or a way to get Beerus and Whis out of there. Yeah, and listen, it's it, like it would. Be, do you think? Wouldn't it be lame to, to for their time and time in the show to be just oh they they weren't simply there th that day? Like, come on, guys, come on. Like, I think like, we can be a bit more imaginative though. than that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. Uh, <clears throat> RDF uh, Red Dragon Force. He wants to know uh, if it's time to um, uh, stop the super chats. Yes, I think now we can say the super chats are indeed closed. Thank you all so much for your contributions. We are now going to rattle through the rest of the things that we got and double speed, because I want to make sure that this drink does not go to my head too much. Sorry, just just <laughs> Philly made too good a cocktail. I'm thinking, oh god, oh dear, oh no, oh no. Okay. Um, to quote Knuckles, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Hello, oh, no. hello everybody, and welcome to Drunk Minecraft with Masako X. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, this is no, this would be the drink of choice when I, when I finally open up my orchard of lemon trees. <laughs> oh, God. All right, okay. <laughs> uh, Papa Podo. I'm curious. In timelines where Bulma and Vegeta have sons with different people, 
Which son is Ranch more like uh, like more likely to like? Going by like the inherited learned personality traits of the parents. Um, I think probably, probably Bulma and Goku's Gohan. In a way, like if it's like not connected or anything like that, but from like connection. So, sort of if I'm being perfectly honest, yeah. If I'm being perfectly honest, the way you presented things in Dragon Ball R and R was very reminiscent of anime where the girl has a precocious crush on her older cousin anyway. So if there was a choice between a younger Gohan and a and and and, and, a, and Trunks, I'm kind of feeling like she might have already kind of been leaning the Gohan direction anyway. Yeah. But it would have required the thing, the big thing is, is it would have required a little bit of, you know, the finagling when yeah. it comes to the moralizing, because you know it's legal for cousins to, to to marry in Japan, but it is it's not it's not considered an okay thing in the West. So, <laughs> and then Gohan's like, no, we can't do this, Ranch. We're related, not by blood. <laughs> uh, oh <laughs> my gosh! <laughs> it's like, I, I was uh, just kind of like, not by blood. <laughs> oh, that's okay then. <laughs> just, yeah, but, um, in all honesty, I th it would just be like that. Because honestly, in R&R, &R, you get rid of that entirely because you think, oh, that's cute. Oh, she likes Gohan. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> it's cute rather than <laughs> awkward. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of thing. Uh, as long as you don't push it too hard, it remains cute. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Nick Wolf, uh, similar to my Gine as Kami what if last week, what if Chi Chi became Shin's assistant? You call this a universe? This place is emptier than a warehouse! Oh man, Shin would finally become the most efficient Supreme Kai ever, just to make sure that she'd stop shouting at me. Just like, Shin is like, oh I really wish Chi Chi you'd stop shouting at me. I I'll do whatever you say, I'll be a better Supreme Kai. I'll stop comparing every single power to freezers. I'll actually do my job. <laughs> Yeah, no, she'd be the best assistant ever. Absolutely. Arthur. Arthur E. King. Happy birthday, Moss. Aw, oh, thanks, Arthur. What if Fortune Teller Barber had her powers unlocked by Guru or Elder Kai? Maybe she can enhance humans like Barber D. That'd be kind of cool. It'd almost be kind of like, you know, making her a bit stronger than Roshi. So, you know... The give her something to do. Yeah, give her something to do. <laughs> you know, a proper witch. Yeah, like proper witch with giving her powers and stuff like that. Not just... Yeah, rocking up on a crystal ball or something like that. It could certainly be... It would certainly be an interesting uh, jaunt, as it were. So she could definitely have more potential. She could she could definitely have magical powers. So, you know, if Barbady came along, you just get Barba and Barbady fighting together. You know, and one of her powers would be Salakadu! You know. <laughs> mm. No, it would definitely much. It would be very definitely interesting seeing Barber D versus Barber. Certainly, um, we could have a proper magic battle in DBZ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. The somewhere man. What if after seeing the massive scale of destruction wrought during the Saiyan saga, Kami became increasingly paranoid and resolved to protect Earth by any means necessary, and I mean any. Well, it would certainly make him much less likely to just like stand there or sit, you know, just let things happen. He'd be a bit more resourceful, almost. Like, he'd probably be very intelligent and know exactly how to do things, but he'd be, like, originally in tuned in this kind of, like, honor system of being, like, I have to be impartial, I have to sit on the sidelines and stuff like that. But he basically was like, I will do anything in my power to help Earth. Then he could actually be very useful. Like, seriously, much more direct. Definitely. Um, Vandalia. What if Goten and Marin became a couple in Super? <coughs> right? That'd be cute, you know, if they let them grow up, you know, and... Uh, yeah. I've, and I've seen some really, really good fan art of older Goten and Marin that, I, that I've always really liked. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and it's like, oh, ain't that cute, Goku? If, my, if our kids marry, we'd be bros-in-law. It's like, you know, <laughs> bros in more ways than one. It's like, that'd be awesome. It's like... And so I think Go Krillin would be Krillin would be okay with it. Yeah. Um, and Gingerbeard asks, "What if Vegeta was female?" Da 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 da. Okay. <laughs> we will 
We will give you the cliff notes. Not really much would change. The Femme Vegeta would have a very big respect for Krillin or Ten Shin Han for their pluckiness. That's just the short of it. But again, we will... Yeah, uh, she, a, a female Vegeta, she definitely wouldn't hook up with, with, with Goku. No. Odds are... Uh, and, and odds are it wouldn't really change much in the long run because her personality would still be the exact same. And uh, at, at best, if you were going to wind up hooking her up with somebody, she'd probably wind up hooking up with the humans just like Vegeta did with it when it came to Bulma. Hmm. She'd probably get with somebody that she could respect a bit more, like Tien. You yeah. know, but but like, yeah, that's about the short and long of it. So basically <laughs> someone with an aptitude for this kind of stuff. All right, okay. Papa Poto was referencing, um, for my Dragon Ball X Undertale what if, how do you imagine the Undertale character's DNA would affect Cell's personality? Well, for starters, he would certainly be speaking in, like, you know, code. Or, like, you know, just, like, not in actual speech. Uh, probably would have, like, more of a... Probably be more, like, have more of a crown-like thing. Basically, much more regal. Much more regal. Yeah. Grandiose. Um, and very elaborate, I would say. Just kind of upping the, the, um, the elegance factor, almost. He, also, he would use Gaster Blasters. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, the Somewhere Man. What if Boo and Deborah switch places in terms of narrative importance? A Deborah saga, if you will. Well, it'd be a good way of bringing in the Makayoshin and, like, having the King of the Demons. Basically, you, our dragon team are fighting the King of the Demon Realm. That'd be kind of cool. It, it would make it feel like having the King of the Demon Realm there wouldn't be such a waste. Because, I mean, like, Boo saga really did ki kind of let a lot of people down when it came to like this idea that like holy crap Deborah the king of the demon realm he's working for Bobbity and then it's like he, he's 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 nothing you know <laughs> and then he's turned into a literal biscuit yeah. mm -hmm. seriously yeah excuse you you and your you Kism, it's a cookie, Moss. It's a cookie. I know, but I was talking about like the endearing tone of a little biscuit. As in, like, that. I am sticking my tongue out at you, too. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All right. Play near. Thank you very much for your super chat. And the Royal Tiger Mercenaries. Dig the name. <laughs> what if when Android 21 was still alive? Uh, she tried to leave Dr. Shiro, but he captured her and turned her into an Infinity Energy model along with 17 and 18, also waking her up at the same time as 17 and 18 during the Android Saga. Oh, she'd be the first one to rebel, and probably actually be the one to, like, just say, look, you two weren't meant to be involved in this. You were dragged into our petty squabble. And basically, she'd almost, like, become their surrogate mother, almost. Yeah. Yeah. As in, like, you know, because 16 probably wouldn't have been activated and be like she probably just takes 16's capsule like taking his pod and then waking him up and they'd be basically a family like 21 wouldn't have the desire to fight she just wants to take out Jero and live a quiet life for a while but then I think, obviously... I think like the androids would become their own faction their own neutral faction basically yes, they become that until and then yeah they would have no interest in wanting to take out people and stuff like that that's so. until Babidi shows up Ah, I see what you did there. Nice. Poto, happy birthday, masks. All according to cake. Excellent. <laughs> As Poto says, I'm um, saying the face <laughs> Exactly, all according to two dozen cupcakes that we've now filled the fridge up, and we're like, oh no, we have to do the grocery shopping on Saturday. How are we going to fit all our food in there? So it's like, I guess <laughs> we're going to have to eat our way out of this problem. <laughs> the best problem to have <laughs> <laughs> yeah paparaccia <laughs> uh, on behalf of Augustus Abram what if the time travelling trunks and super was a super complement end of Z uh, end of Z trunks I rephrased it oh, so basically if it was like end of Z trunks from that future uh, power would certainly be alright uh, a bit of a different variation instead of the actual future trunks and yeah, I, I suppose a bit more grounded in the relationship towards, you know, what happens in that. Like, a bit more of an understanding in context, perhaps? I'm guessing? <laughs> yeah, so I think I'm along those lines. Uh, okay, uh, Nick Wolf. 
What if Marin, blue haired one, returned as serious as can be Z Warrior and develops a rivalry with 18? Not over Krillin's affections, just as fighters. Oh, man. Oh, seriously. It'd be basically like 18 and Zangya, like in the games. Like, there would be those moments. There'd be those moments, like, 18 just, like, derides Marin. It's like, you possibly being a fighter? Please. And, like, Marin actually ends up actually being pretty decent. Not enough to actually win against 18, but much better than 18 expected. And, yeah. I, I, and, you know, the typical type of, there, there would, of course, with this, there'd be that typical low-key level of fan service. Like, you know, hands on hips, you know, kind of like almost like chests out, all that kind of thing, as in like being trying to be defiant. It's all part of them being like, oh yeah, well you like that. So basically, and Krillin's in the middle of this, like, can we please focus on the battle, please, ladies? You stay out of this, Krillin. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> it's like, they, you know, Krillin would be the one to stay out of it. It'd just be that moment where there's just a heated argument or something like that. But <coughs> that is, that is a new one. But I'm not necessarily, I'm not necessarily thinking that's a bad one or a weird one. It's like strangely curious. But yeah, <laughs> we could write that down maybe <laughs> as like a, a one-shot April Fool. That'd be funny. <laughs> That'd be funny. As I like feel that. like, I feel like something like like with with Marin versus uh, eighteen, right? It feels almost fan servicey. Like, like here's the episode where the two girls, where the two, where the two hot women of Dragon Ball fight over, fight with each other. You know, it feels it feels like almost like it would be one of those bonus OVA episodes. <laughs> yeah, but you, I think if you played it well and you played it carefully. You could have a bit of fans. Yeah, service. yeah. You could have a bit of fans. Well, service, I'm not but... saying that. I'm not saying it would necessarily be a bad thing. I'm just saying that, that it would carefully. wind up being. Mm -hmm. Tread carefully. No, definitely. You just tread carefully. <laughs> you could actually come up with something pretty cool. Okay. Six one. What if Raditz took Goku's place on Earth, like swapped? Um. Well, if that were the case, if it were just Raditz, I imagine he'd probably be a little bit more cautious. Very risk averse, trying to a actually capitalizing on the fact that Freezer is no longer, you know, Freezer's not there, and just generally, just actually having that chance to just, you know, actually live a life almost. So I think he'd be very like wanting not to rock the boat or anything like that, being very resourceful. Would you say? Like definitely, I, I I definitely think I definitely think that Raditz, if if Raditz went to Earth and it was a situation where like he was at least because you know being older than Goku, he would probably have at least a, a peripheral understanding of something mm. like you could you could say that like um, Bardock and Gine put a message in the pod, right? Yeah, infant Goku wouldn't have known how to access access that even if he even if he did, mm. uh, 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 even if there was one, but Rad. Bits could access the message. Bardock and Gine could lay out, you know, what their what their fear of the situation is, and Raditz would wind up on the planet, probably wind up in the care of Gohan, and he'd probably, you know, being Raditz, he's cunning, he's cautious, he'd probably keep his head down a lot more, but he's also really powerful, mm. and learning some degree of of responsibility and discipline and stuff like that from Grandpa Gohan, who is still a pretty a pretty good martial artist in his own right you know um uh i think i think it would be a very very different scenario because raditz has a higher level of like of like social intellect than than goku yeah. does he knows how to talk to people he knows how to interact with people a bit more than goku does um mm. and, and and uh i think I think it would definitely lead to a situation where you'd probably have him vying for Bulma's affection first off, because he's older than Goku is. You know, he's more of an age with Bulma anyway. Hmm. Um, and it would probably be very similar in execution in a lot of ways to Dragon Ball Psy, but with a bit more silliness because Raditz has more comedic potential than Vegeta does. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I would I would absolutely agree with that. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arugulus. Uh, happy birthday. Thanks, thanks, chum. What if present Goku became actual real Goku Black for real at this present time in Super? 
Well, basically, if it would just be a case of what happened with Goku Black, like, literally in that t a different timeline, this version of Goku becomes Goku Black, and then, boom. There'd just be no trunks to help, so I basically would just have to play the sound. So, yeah, wah, wah, everybody would pretty much perish. Rocks fall, everyone dies. And Goku Black would reign supreme. God of Anarchy. What if Goku talked and acted like Rolf from Ed, Ed, and Andy since Peter Kalamis was the voice actor <laughs> of Rolf in the Ocean Dove voice actor of Goku? Oh, yeah, I've seen very... Uh, Have and I were at a panel where he basically did that. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> it's great. You get the mark, uh, you mark the son of a brilliant scientist? Uh, uh, I, oh, yeah, it, it's Never fun. mark the son of a scientist! <laughs> no, absolutely. No, seriously, if you ever get a chance to, like... See Peter Columbus at a panel. He definitely does that. But bless him, he really doesn't remember much of the original law. Bless him. But to be honest, it was a yeah. long time ago. I don't. Blame it was him. a long time ago. I really don't blame him. I'm just. I'm just glad that Peter's getting the recognition he deserves. That and Ian. Yeah. I'm. I'm glad those two are getting the recognition and kudos they deserve. But yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. I've heard. No, Peter is really good at panels. He's really funny. He's got really good yep. timing. Also, talk to him about wine. He very much likes a good good glass of wine. Just a tip there. Um, but don't ask him about his colonoscopy. Oh, yeah. No, you have no, to be there. No. You have to be there. <laughs> you have to be there, yeah. You definitely be have there. to be there. The Epic Medic. <laughs> have you thought about doing What Ifs in the DBZA universe style? Happy Gig Day, What If Man. Thanks, Epic. Uh, I, I, I have thought about this in some days, but to be honest, I'm like... You kind of get that with the dragon shorts now. Like, I'm... Probably one of these days I might elect to write a script for them. <laughs> like, you know, write a script for them in terms of, like, what if -ery. But I don't know whether my style of writing would actually gel well with theirs. But I can easily just maybe come up with a pitch, perhaps. I feel that... I haven't seen any there. of those. Yeah. They're, they're good. Okay. They're, they are good. And, you know, it's, it's been fun to actually think of different scenarios. You know, especially with Gohan getting fight requests from Vegeta, that was kind of funny. I think the closest thing th thing we have to that is uh, is the Guinea Force one because our Guinea Force are more based on uh, on the DBZA Guinea Squad rather than you know the proper yeah Guinea Squad. Hmm. No, that's the closest that. we have. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, Plane Air ninety two. What if Launch's personalities combined together? Well, you basically would just have regular Launch, but everyone, but a lot of people have been asking this lately. And people have actually been coming up with a good idea that her hair would be green, as in a mixture of blue and yellow. But I imagine probably, mm. she probably, her default, her default personality would be of Launch, yeah, a blue Launch, but then basically would have a very short temper. Like, things could, yeah, she, you could easily be provoked. That kind of stuff. And let's not forget that there is one more secret personality, the bold launch. A oh, bold launch. <laughs> okay. It, 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 it's an R and R in joke. It's an R and R in joke, yeah. Then we have <laughs> Alfafa Abjakov Um Argentinian pesos. Hmm, that's a new one. Um hi, this is my first time. Welcome, Afafa. Wouldn't it be interesting if Kakarot landed on the Ux King castle and was adopted by him? By the way, saying an armor and Chi Chi's ones are very similar, or if he was adopted by the Crane Hermit. Oh, we've had the one with Master Shen, but if Ox King adopted Goku, he would certainly be very, very welcoming father. Very, very like thinking this was like a, a gift from the heavens or something like that. He'd be very, very doting. He'd be a very good dad. I'm, I have no doubt about that. The Ox King is a very doting father. <laughs> Oh, thank you, the heavens, for giving me son. <coughs> and Kami's like, I have nothing to do with this. Leave me uh, alone. <laughs> well, not not really. Not not really, Ox King. I just saw I saw the pod going by. No, well, you do you. You do you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Riku with Styria. Not sure if this has been asked, but what if Vegeta and Goku were both sent to Earth? Well, if they were both sent to Earth, Vegeta would rule the roost because he's that slight bit older. So he has more of a faculty. And Goku would just be like his minion, almost. Like, it was like, Gee, Vegeta, what are we gonna do today? The same thing we do every day, Son Goku. Try to take over the world! It's Goku, it's Goku, and the... 
It's cool. Da, 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 da. It's, it, it's Kaka, Kaka, Rot, and the Jutes, 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 Jutes. Oh God! <laughs> what would be the Goku snarf? I'm just gonna dissociate now. No, be us. <laughs> it's like. It's like, yeah. <laughs> there be da, 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 da. <laughs> All right, okay. Pompa Poto. What if a Margin Time Patroller absorbed Demigra? Well, you'd have the King of the Margin Demons. You'd have a demon god, that kind of stuff. Jeez. I mean, basically, it'd probably be this Time Patroller who thinks that, oh, if I try and possess Demigra, I might be able to control his power and use it for good. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. I did it really wrong. Think of a hijinks, basically the the uh, filter thing in the movie Twelve, that made you an ember. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. You basically yep. end up creating something <laughs> really bad, and like you end up with like, I don't know what the anime is, but it's like this guy Shinji who's a real jerk in it, and then gets like transmuted into this thing that basically explodes, and like it's in loads of anime compilations of the worst, like the most gory transformations ever. Again, I don't know the anime. But it's so cathartic because clearly this guy is a real jerk. Like, even more of a jerk than Goldo. And I know he's working on it. In fact, um, I am going to have this cute line of, like, Krillin works for Goldo. It's like, really, Krillin? You, you don't think I'm a jerk? It's okay. I can tell you're working on it. It's like, aww. <laughs> it's, that, it's that payoff line. As in, like, aww. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's not Ava. It's a it's a relatively recent one. It's on Watch Mojo um, compilations all the time. Um, so yeah, it's uh, no no it's not Akira. It's it's quite a recent one, and it's a, the guy who happens to it is Shinji. It's like a blue haired guy. He's a real jerk apparently, and yeah, the name will come up to me if it's it's relatively recent again, like in the last few years. Uh, okay, Nick will suggest to launch green hair or blue yellow highlights. Oh, I'd have green hair. I'd have green hair. Craig Twitchell. Yeah, green hair. Yeah, green hair. You gotta really kind of up the variation and the combinations. You gotta have green hair. Yeah. It's like, screw the rules. I have green hair. <laughs> this is like zero, uh, season zero, Kaiba. <laughs> yeah. Screw the hair. I have green rules. Like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, Craig Twitchell. What if Ranch, after accidentally making Goku not a thing in the past, had to take his place in the story from the beginning? Oh. Uh, I imagine Ranch should probably be very careful, very methodical, trying to find ways of different, like, ways to fix it. Like, try and, like, make it so that means Goku arrived on planet Earth, made him, like, do all the certain things, be very careful to try and create or fix things. Like, Dad will kill me, assuming that Dad actually comes to the planet. Which in this situation he probably might not because I screwed it up so bad. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. And so, again, trying to be fix everything because she does not like to create problems. Uh, Riku Wisteria, just to ask, have you seen the Gine comic in Divin Art made by Gine Reboot? I have not. I have not seen it. Uh, seen it, but I will definitely give it a look. See. Yeah. Uh, I wonder. I I would like to see whether it's actually inspired in some way. I would certainly be very intrigued about it. But again, I will, I will check this out in my own time. I'll be I'll be sure to have it bookmarked. I'll I shall pin it to my tabs. Okay. Uh, nonverbal pie. It's a good name. Uh, what if Android thirteen along with fourteen and fifteen were reinvented like the other movie villains you did? One idea I had them as being from Universe 6. Ah! Check out part... Now there's an interesting one. Well, we do have that in the Good Ginyu story. And we have that for part 3. You'll get to see more of that at the beginning of November. So you'll get to see how we can implement those three. So look forward to that. Hmm. But also, we we'll, like we'll, we would like to reboot those guys also. Like, the video will come one day. Yeah, we'll certainly do, like, a proper discussion video about it. Yeah. Afafa, by the way, happy birthday. Love your vids. I've even inspired me to write and think about what if scenarios. Oh, cool, Afafa. Nice. Hope you, uh, best of luck with your writing skills, buddy. Riku Wisteria, what if future Android 18 turned good and came to the past? I imagine probably it'd be very, very tenuous, like, uh, you know, kind of like alignment and redemption. But I think she'd be the more likely one to turn good, almost. 
Like 17, probably unredeemable and stuff. But I think 18 would be less likely to... Because there were moments where the future Android 18 was wanting to have a quiet life and stuff like that. But, you know, she was kind of almost encouraged by um, 17 to kind of go along with stuff. So I think if she did, then coming to the past, probably learn a thing or two about settling down with the present Android 18. I think it could be very interesting. And like a way of discovering it, it's like, oh, it's my uh, cousin from a different, you know, region. But you two look really similar. And it's like, as in like, we're uh, very close cousins. It's like, oh, okay. Our, our mothers were twin sisters. Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> or the DBCA guy, <laughs> that makes sense. That meant when in doubt, just ask Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Craig Twitchell, <laughs> what if Jiro turned the Teletubbies into androids? Oh. Oh. And it's like, uh, and it's like, Jiro uh, basically. Has the little thing going up. Time for Teletubbies! <laughs> My most terrifying creation to date! <laughs> and you have, like, instead of, and instead of the infant son, uh, you have the Jiro son. Yes. Jiro was the son. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> and then basically they see Goku. Uh oh! <laughs> <laughs> And just Later that on. random fan, the random fan, if it goes really to, if that, that powers them. So instead of an infinity engine, it's that little wind, uh, the pinwheel. <laughs> the pinwheel. <laughs> oh the pinwheel God. gives them their strength. I don't want to uh, set it out because I'm pretty sure somebody did, if somebody did Elmo, you, somebody did Teletubbies. <laughs> I don't know what they thought of it. <laughs> Elmo already broke half once. I'm sure the Teletubbies would do it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, there probably me. is a mod somewhere. Oh, I gotta take this. Oh, I'll be right. Okay. Well, we shall continue. Mario Lover Adventure Geek wishes a happy birthday. Thank you. As does Kirby163. Thank you, you guys. Craig Twitchell then goes, What if Jero turned Barney into an android? Big hug is like, you know, proper. Well, there are dinosaurs in the Dragon Ball world, so it actually yeah. kind of makes more sense. Like, yeah. Barney is the cousin of Icarus. I can imagine, like, like you know, like Goku. I th Jeez, Barney, you are hugging me a little bit too hard. I know. Goodbye, Son Goku. Wait, what? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Self destruct. And. Aragalus says, please make more songs, Masako. I'd love to hear Goku singing Go the Distance from Hercules. That is actually one of my favorite, that is actually my favorite Disney movie, Hercules. So I'd be very down for singing Go the Distance. It's a good, it's a good song. Especially hitting the last note, definitely. But you can expect more songs. Craig Twitchell, what if Jerome made the Powerpuff Girls to fight Goku? <laughs> Craig, you're on a roll here, oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, Craig. Jeez. <laughs> oh, okay. It's meta enough. I'll allow it. <laughs> I think I, I think to subvert expectations, he would do what they did with, you know, with uh, uh, with formation in, in Tournament of Power, and he would create Powerpuff Boys. Yeah, you know? I think the ra like the Rowdy Rock Boys. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Riku Wisteria, what if Raditz had been a lower power level than in canon history? Oh man. So if, I imagine the fight would have been more intense, like probably not to the death, but I imagine that probably Raditz would have like genuinely wanted to like beg for forgiveness or something like that. Like he'd be more likely to try and like, you know, like, wait, don't kill me, Kakarot! And all that kind of stuff. He'd be a bit more desperate. Like Raditz was only desperate and stuff like that right at, at the end. But I imagine he probably would Probably like, like uh, relent a bit earlier than that. More likely to comply. Godfather Guzma. Happy birthday, Masako. Oh, thanks, Guzma. I have an interesting what if for you. What if Saiyans didn't have the same pride? No shame in fusion, dirty tricks, etc. Well, they'd be certainly much more willing to participate in stuff like that. 
like, you know, less prideful. But to be honest, their, their sane pride is sort of what makes them them, almost. Because otherwise, they'd be basically human. They'd just be, like, jerks. Other than, except jerks with tails, and that's it. It's a defining trait of theirs, which makes the Saiyans kind of a bit, you know, stand out a bit more, phys you know, physically than a human, would you say, Hav? Yeah, yeah. I I think I agree with that. Yeah. Again, it's distinctive yeah. enough. It's definitely distinctive enough. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, distinction is everything in design. Yeah, it's in very design. important in Dragon Ball. Yeah. Uh, Keeper of Necronomicon. Okay, let's see. I would imagine so. Keeper of Necronomicon. What if Vegeta decided early on he beat Kakarot by beating, being a better parent? I.e., what if Vegeta tried to be a good dad from the start? Well, the thing is, though, it's like he already sort of is a better dad. Like, he is genuinely trying. Like, when was the last time that Goku took his kids to an amusement park? I rest my case. Vegeta did. Yep. <laughs> there you go. So I imagine, especially in Super Necronomicon, like, I imagine, you know, like, you know, Vegeta's the one walking, carrying trunks and bullet in a papoose and stuff like that. Being, like, very close with, um, with his kids. APC. An episode in Super Fatien. A volleyball episode. Well, that counts as the beach party episode. You have a beach episode where Ten Shin Han is basically the king of volleyball. You know, you get your beach party episode and stuff like that. There you go. That that's kind of like what they're doing. They're at the beach, sort of like a beach resort. When at the beginning of the Broly movie, or the present day stuff, that'd be kind of cool. Craig, what if the Z team swapped personalities with each other? Oh well, we sort of actually had a mind of that making that for a fan servicey type of gimmick for a for a future R and R special. If we ever did that, you know, it's like very interesting. But I can certainly imagine that if we were doing that, it would certainly be a lot of hijinks. We certainly will do that in the fullness of time, like having all the R and R characters like change personalities due to a, a very very interesting uh, turn of events, which means that they all then have split personalities, and here comes the hijinks and all that stuff. We'll definitely work on that. And Nerd King coming in with a big super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. I left my birthday message on Facebook, but still wanted to make a donation. I did plan to commission a picture of you and Sir Gokart sharing cake as a goodwill gesture, but my artist disappeared, so I hope this can, uh, this, you know, commiserates or compensates. Dude, Nerd King, you, that is really appreciated, dude, and I really hope that you and your mum are doing alright. Just take it easy out there. I know that this is really appreciated. This really does help ensure that, you know, the world of What Ifery on this channel can continue, and we will certainly do yeah. our very best to keep things going. Thank you so much, Nerd King. And Take it easy, I think. Yeah, and if yeah. you do ever get that so go kart thing, I will definitely repost it on Twitter and give you full credit because to showcase it. Again, thank you so much, dude. Vandalia. What if Raditz's hair meant he was Super Saiyan 3? Ah, yes, the classic joke. Like, he is basically ultimate Raditz with Super Saiyan 3 as his default. So, basically, he just didn't know it yet. Like, it's a hidden power of some description. It could certainly be funny. Kirby163? What if 17 and 18 kills Goku Directive was still a thing? Well, it sort of is. A, it sort of is. But it's just the thing is, though, they are teenagers. They are petulant and don't listen to the rules. So they basically were like, yeah, we know. We want to kill Goku. But we'll just do it in our own time, you know? So, like, basically, if it was, like, more of an imperative directive or something like that, then I can imagine them, like, doing, um... Like something along those lines of like they'll do it in their own time, or like they're more imperative. But then we miss out the cool antics of them in the van. We can't we can't forget that. That's a really important part of the show. It takes away the essence of the Android saga if you get rid of that, doesn't it, Have? Yeah. 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 It's 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 definitely something that we couldn't live without. Uh, Kirby163 again. What if Kid Trunks could see the future? It's like... Oh, oh man. Can you imagine? The future! Like, Future Trunks, ironically, does not have the power to see the future. But the present version does. 
Like, I mean, hijinks, a lot of hijinks, and I, I think a lot of uh, hijinks and even bigger disaster started by, you know, him meaning well. Mm. Good intentions. Definitely good yeah. intentions. Yeah. George J. What if Pilaf was Goku's rival? The little demon boy stops relying on mechs and lackeys to get what he wants and starts training to become a warrior. Ah, yes. The very much method. Um, ah, yes. The method, the meta, the general idea of Pilaf, who basically, after the Pilaf saga, decides to train and become stronger. He basically would just replace Garlic Jr. with Pilaf. Just get rid of get rid of Garlic Jr. and have Pilaf, who then has the transformation. You know, I, 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 I guarantee you that would definitely be much more receptive. Uh, yeah, I know Gobi. I know this Garlic Jr. Apparently, I heard that it was a thing, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to listen to the theories and all that. And the George said, "What if Vegeta went to work with Goku? We've just had this, but basically, in short, Vegeta would rule the roost. They take over the planet." And Goku would be his minion. Like, the remake of Nappa. Nappa would be kicked to the curb. Because Goku is even more impressionable. Uh, Riku, let's do it. Goku cannon! Abandoned ship! Oh, you can't hear us? Oh, okay. <laughs> Some, somebody said that I was like a little quiet or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I heard it was fine, but... Okay. Maybe there was so much. Well, anyway. Uh, no, don't worry. I've, I've turned it up now. Uh, but yeah, okay. the, George, the George said, what if Vegeta went to Earth with Goku? Basically, we were talking about that. Vegeta would rule the rules. Go Goku would be the minion. Great, what if Gine survived but was trapped on another planet? Well, it'd be a way to explain a way that Gine was actually still alive or something like that. Uh, like, oh, she was just taken away to a different planet that nobody knows the identity of. Which means that they can bring her back at a future date. Because, you know, there were, there were definitely Saiyans that ignored the call from Frieza. And they're definitely still around somewhere. Yeah, they're just waiting for Toriyama to rely on them in the fullness of time. Uh, George J, will there be a Super 17 arc in What If Raditz Turned Good GT? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh no, 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 there no. won't be. May or maybe no, no. or maybe no, no. It's but maybe. maybe no. But what if no? No. We are usually quite flexible, but unfortunately for this time we have we are having to make an exception. Unless no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we like to rag on him. The flaming seeker. What if um, what if Android Twenty One existed in canon? Either human dur beings during the R and R arc, or as an android hidden like sixteen during the Android Saga. I mean, technically, he should not exi exist just as a human, just. It didn't become an android, in my understanding. Like, like, listen, uh, Gibbo or Gebo or whatever do you uh, want to read him? Like, he needed to have a mother, so she is a character <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, there she is. And look forward to what we do in R and R. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, we got yeah. plans. We got plans. Satoshi yeah. Gecko, thank you very much for your uh, contribution. Paparaccia. What if Goten uh, took on the dress style and vernacular of a delinquent while staying a Simon role? Basically becoming like Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks. Basically, you know. Uh, just basically... Goten! Yeah. So basically just trying to be a delinquent, dressing up like one, but it just fails and everyone thinks like, Oh, look at him. He's trying to be like a juvie. Oh. I'm like, come on, guys! I want to be a delinquent. Oh, but you're just so cute, though. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm kind of cute. Yeah. Like, it'd just be cute that he's trying. So yeah, Riku Wisteria. What if Goku landed at the family of Mr. Satan? Well, the thing is, though, Mr. Satan is sort of a similar age to Goku, almost. So like, they would the be brothers. Are... Yeah. Mm. They would be sort of great brothers. I think. I think like 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 a kid Mark could be. Initially, he could be like a. We would have like you know that classic story of a jealous older brother feeling to to be replaced, yeah. and then and then causing some problems, uh, in which that will will cause to the brother to younger brother to go missing, but they bond over, 
you know, Mark doing the good, do, doing a good thing and ultimately yeah. saving. Yeah, no, I, I can I can believe that. I could certainly believe that. Okay. Um, GTDBA, thank you very much for your contribution. Fred Twitchell, what if Trogdor the Burninator was in Dragon Ball? Ah, uh, yes. Burninator in the countryside. Burninator Trogdor. the peoples. And they're thatched cottages! Trogdor! And the air crust comes in the night! <laughs> Yeah. Trogdor! Ah, Trogdor. Trogdor was a Saiyan! I mean, he was a dragon! He was a, a dragon Saiyan! Dragon Saiyan! And that's why it's called Trogdor! <laughs> there you go. Uh, you just have Kikuchi with that thing. Yeah. Okay. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's that's the joke of the, that's the joke of the evening there. That's the joke. That's that's the meta joke. That's the meta joke. That's the yoke. Yeah. That's the yoke. <laughs> Riku Wisteria. What if Prince Vegeta learned that Frieza blowing up Planet Vegeta very early? Okay. So basically, if Prince Vegeta found out that Frieza was going to blow up Planet Vegeta, no one would believe him. King Vegeta would basically think, "Yo, what are you going on about?" Like, because the thing is, they won't listen to a child, even if it's the prince. That, that they certainly wouldn't believe him. But then I imagine that eventually it would be this feeling of resentment towards everyone. Feeling like he could have destroyed, he could have saved the day, but no one believed him. So it'd be a case of basically making himself much more reliable. So I think something along those lines. Basically a bit more. Or reliable. no, you know, like it would be a very vegetative thing to assume. Like, no, they were idiots. They, they did it to themselves. <laughs> Yeah, like, that's, you know, what, that's what I'm trying to say. It's in like basically they yeah. did it to themselves. Yeah. <sighs> okay, just gotta like, just do that. Do 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 do. All right. Okay. Next one is Son Goku's I Am speech made by What If Krillin. That sounds pretty hilarious. I am the hope of the Omniverse. I am the light bulb in the darkness. I am the bacon in the fridge from all living things that cry out in hunger. I am the alpha and the omega. I am the terror that flits in the night. I am Krillin. No, I am the Krill Dog. And I am a super Saiyan. And that's a good way for Sippy to come back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Had a family phone call. It's okay. <laughs> no, no, it was just per perfect timing. Perfect timing. Yeah, perfect timing. Yeah. Uh, Craig Twitchell, <laughs> what if him from the Powerpuff Girls was a DB villain? Oh man. Oh, oh gosh. But him is him's a really good villain. Yeah. I love him. Him him is him is him is very good, and uh, I think I think it would be cool to have a. Mu much a much more like blatantly like um evil and also he's he's a in part a magically based villain uh so so it would yet be yet another opportunity to get some more magic stuff in dbz yep. but yeah D, let's let's go full on db dbz crossover with the powerpuff girls yeah yeah the yeah, city yeah. of townsville I is under attack and and powerpuff girls need help so the z fighters have to come in <laughs> I just have, like I I just have you know like like that Team Fortress Two style thing like with Frieza. I fear no Saiyan or man, but that thing. And we hear uh, he, uh, when he <laughs> when him is laughing, scares me. <laughs> oh. Uh, Mysterio, what if DBZ was like Halo Red versus Blue? Well, Goku would be Caboose. Oh, Goku would gosh. be Caboose. I mean, isn't he kind of already? <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah, in short, Goku would be the <laughs> Mark Galvin. What if the Son family learned a technique where they could communicate with their ancestors and tap into their old power? Ultimate family Kamehameha? Wow, the history of the Goku family? Like, Bardock... Maybe the Punisher canon. Like, Goku somehow remembers, like, Bardock's attacks. Even though he yeah. was nowhere near them. I mean, it'd be really cool at, in the moment... But a, a lot of people and then go like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. 
But why does it need to make sense? It looks cool. Like, damn you and your theories about what if -ery. It looks cool. <laughs> I was wrong, yeah. Like, in minus one, we are developing, you know, an additional backstory for characters like Bardock. So, yeah. Mm. Well, you know, when you don't have that stuff in canon, but you want to explore those characters, you kind of have to come up with your own thing. And yeah, it gets into that realm of fanfic style conjecture, but I mean, all things considered, it's kind of what people want, you know, exploration of, of things that aren't explored in, in the main the main series. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I think I think, you know, that it's not a bad thing. You just kind of have to know where, where, when, when not to take it too far. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, okay. Uh, Papa Poto asks, what if DBC had a character like Danzo? And that's Danzo. Who boy. Naruto. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we could finally maybe get a, get an idea of like the politics going on on the planet because like, I, I, I would picture it as kind of like a dude who's probably trying to usurp, king furry or something like that you know like he's trying to usurp the throne he wants to create a political structure that'll create a more adequate defense for earth right like he he brings up like to king furry like we keep being attacked by aliens and other crazy crazy entities constantly and you rely on this handful of idiots <laughs> to defend what? the planet what? uh i think we need to establish a a, a group of like freaking key powered super soldiers or something like that like i could see him maybe maybe being the kind of character who'd be at the head of like maybe like a clone arc right if Jero was the guy creating robots donzo would be the guy who's doing like genetic manipulation and crap uh, and you'd wind up with them having to fight the evil, uh, evil, evil guys that have been instilled with their, 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 their powers and genetics and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a big thing for his response. Super, super sport. <laughs> what if after Dragon Ball ended, Piccolo became the main character, going through a similar arc, but the camera was always on him and he became the Goku? Well, in theory, that could easily happen because Go, but because Piccolo is confirmed to be around in the days of Dragon Ball Online, so in theory, he could be the main character. Like, he could easily because that you know he sees all the people he know die of old age, and he basically becomes the main bastion of Dragon Ball. So honestly, it could be like that period between in history, like in in the eight hundreds, nine hundreds, where Go Piccolo is seeing the planet from his perspective. That could be cool. Yeah. Riku Wisteria, what if Goku woke up in the past in Bardock's body? Well, he certainly would be a nice a nice guy, and he would certainly be much more mellow, and everyone would think that this guy, really strong guy, why is he being so soft and all of a sudden? But I think Gine would absolutely love it. But he would be confused. He, he'll be confused how he got the scar. He, he didn't remember getting a scar. Wh why am I wearing this bandana? I don't remember. <laughs> But then Gine is like all around him, basically. But then again, it's a chance for him to see his mum. Oh, You know, he gets to give his mum a hug. That'd be sweet. Craig, what if while going to Nemec, Bulma had to deal with HAL 9000? Uh, well, that would certainly be, you know. Open the pod bay doors. I'm sorry, Bulma. <laughs> I'm afraid that I can't do that. And it's like, I, I again, I love 2001. And I've actually finished reading uh, <laughs> 3001. The ending is just Independence Day. It really is. The ending is just Independence Day. <laughs> Seriously. Like, I I'm going to spoil it for you. They basically, the, the, the monoliths basically are like computers and go like, no, humanity, bad. <laughs> and then, yeah. I know, Frank Poole is somehow alive. Like, they find his body in space. And it's, Frank Poole is now brought back to life. A thousand years later. Okay. And then, oh, pool. Oh, let's infect the monolith with a virus. Oh, the virus is gone. Yay, we're saved. And stuff. Like, uh... Yeah, human bad. Ah, violence. <laughs> All that stuff. Human bad. 
I don't know why monoliths are suddenly squid and, wars, but I love the, it. Absolutely. An Odyssey clock be going really heavy on the anti-religious sentiments. Like seriously. Yeah. Like seriously. Uh, it's like stop, Mr. Clark, stop, stop, please, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> like for the sake, he'd be like talking for Deus' sake. Like oh, seriously, stop. Mm. Oh. <laughs> It's a short book. Though. It's a short book, but yeah, I prefer. I I like the second book. The second book is good too. The second book is good, to be fair. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, then he says, "What if Imperfect Cell absorbed Perfect Cell?" I'm sorry, that's a new one. If that somehow happened, you'd then get a meta cell, or maybe because that was never in programming, it would then basically we'd be like divide by zero, like the cell would completely like be corrupted or something like that. <laughs> It what would be, cell... a, a, again, perfect cell with a flow. That, that would yeah. be the full name of the form. What if cell absorb Boo? You get Bell. Uh, and what if Volmer and Jero fuse? You get the most brilliant mind, the biggest, the lady, the a bearded lady. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically the, the, cir the, circus, the circus act is then comes true. Basically, Volmer with a brilliant bushy, a great big bushy beard. A <laughs> great! Big, big bushy beard. <laughs> there you go. All right, nomadic <laughs> chaos. No what ifs. I can think of just happy birthday to Marsico. Thanks, nomadic. Much obliged. Uh, James Cameron. Happy birthday. I hope you enjoy the birthday week because you deserve a birthday week. Ah, oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, but a YouTuber's yeah. work is never done. I'm also working on FF7 MA, the, the finale, so I'm also doing that too. Also, no, when least... is the next Gohan is Broly and turns Super Saiyan first? Uh, probably in November or December. I really need to kind of like work on my timings and stuff like that. But just you know. have have I sent you Gohan versus Broly or something? Uh, you did like uh, it was uh, last month. Yeah, so yeah, relatively I... recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Gobi, and I am your brother, Kakarot. Goku. No, you're not. My brother is a green fox guy with a fluffy tail. I. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> This is in relation to the uh, <laughs> a previous thing we got, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Crate Switch says, "Happy birthday, Jiro baked you a cake and a cookie." Ah, Jiro cares after all. He made it with science. Oh, um, and androids, the evil androids. <laughs> Papa Archer, random alien. We finally <laughs> bought our planet back from Frieza. Too bad our cities have been leveled and replaced with shiplap. <laughs> it's like, uh, but yes. oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Okay, Paparacha, thank That's you. That's okay. You can rebuild. Mm -hmm. Paparacha, thanks for the lemon super sticker. That is very, very apt. <laughs> uh, Kirby Ye wants three. What if le eighteen learned Turtle School martial arts? Well, Roshi would know uh, know better than to try and le le to lech on her for a start because he got told very early on in the Boo Saga. Uh, but I imagine she'd probably get a better understanding about, you know, Krillin's techniques and stuff like that. It might be a curious fascination. She might have, she might be aware of the techniques because she's there at Kamehameha's house just, like, watching as, Ka as Krillin's throwing Kamehameha's into the ocean over and over again. So, yeah, could definitely see that being the case. <laughs> could definitely see that being the case. Ice259. I don't know why people think Fem Vegito is a good idea. She'll be unbearable to be around, let alone to have kids with. Fem, I think Fem Vegeta. Because <laughs> the thing is, like, Vegeta is sort of really unbearable to be around anyway. But, you know, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's down eventually. It's, it's the intrinsic part of Vegeta's personality is that he's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly abrasive. But, like, you can reach the softer parts if you really work at it like Bulma did. The biggest thing when it comes to a Finn Vegeta is whether or not any of the Z fighters would really be ready to, to, to really work at that sort of thing. And a lot of people tend to forget that Vegeta shows up late along the timeline of, of things that happen, you know, because DBZ is... An entirely separate arc from from all of the stuff that went on in Dragon Ball. So by the time Vegeta shows up, female or otherwise, Goku's married. So so unless Goku, you know, 
breaks breaks his vows to Chi Chi, which I don't really see Goku doing, you know, idiot or otherwise. Goku, I don't think, would do that to Chi Chi. Mm. Um, you wind up with a very limited pool of male or female characters, for that matter. Yeah. Who who would be willing to do to, to do that or go that distance with that regard? Um, I don't see Bulma doing it because Bulma's interests have always been in men. Um, and as far as the other characters go, like maybe Tien, considering that Tien did have kind of a thing with, with launch and with launch gone by the time DBZ happens, because, you know, Oriyama forgot about her, but you know, in a story sense, she might've just decided to move on and do other things with her life. I could kind of maybe see a Femme Vegeta and Tien working if Vegeta's the one who's kind of working at at trying to get Tien involved. But it's tricky. Femme Vegeta and the Ox King. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, Satan Tube wishes me a happy birthday, as does Flame X. Thank you so much, you two. Really appreciate it. Then Aragalus goes, Demon Deborah would introduce Xenoverse due to Xenotrunk's main enemy be- being Demon God Mira. So basically, Deborah is the guy, the mascot of Xenoverse. That'd be kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, he's he's the opening act, I guess. The the lead in, he opens mm. for Demigra. He opens for Demigra. So yeah, no, I, could, I could definitely see that. I could definitely see that idea. Vulcan, what if Gohan trained Videl in the Room of Spirit in time before the World Tournament? Well, I think Go. Uh, if they did, then Videl could gain get some pretty decent gains. Not, like, tons, not enough to get into, like, six figures or anything, but certainly enough to basically wallop anyone on the planet. If it was just Gohan and Videl in the Room of Spirit and Time before yeah, the I was about. tournament, I think that we'd have that timeline where Pan was born out of... I was, about to, say, I was about to say, do we mean Train or do we mean Train? <laughs> yeah, just, both. both. It's like, you know, but like... It's... Lemon mode activated! No, Videl would be like, but Gohan, why didn't your mom come in? Like... Oh wait, okay. <laughs> are you kidding? Are you kidding me right? Now? Are you kidding me right now, Moss? Videl would be the one pushing, and you know it. Gohan's oh, way oh, too oh, shy oh, and anxious. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh. Videl, Videl. <laughs> no, but basically, Videl's like going at it, and Gohan's like, Videl, keep your voice down. Mom might. Hear- All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh and my god. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Gohan can Gohan can go for hours in the time chamber, but in real life it's just seconds. Oh no, it's the other way around. Or is it? Anyway, timings! Timings. <laughs> Again, I can't wait to open up my lemon orchard coming very soon. Well, if ever, hopefully. One of these days. Oh gosh, Masako's YTP, lemon YTP, orchard. YTP, YTP. Yes. It's just about the lemon tree. Time. Time for Moss to get a daily motion channel. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vulcan, what if DNA was sent to Vampa? Any Suno what ifs in works? Uh, in terms of what if Sunos, uh, probably not because again, there's not really much call for it, and the 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 the, the, sub, the source material is quite limited in that regard. Uh, Gine sent to Vampa. If she was sent there, Broly was there too. I think she'd be basically a de facto mother, almost like, mm-hmm. like at that point. Like, Paragus would think, oh, she's just a useless Saiyan, very weak, but is somehow able to, like, calm Broly down almost. So basically tolerates her being around. You know, as a... And the benefit of that is that nothing bad could happen to Gine, because if Broly kind of imprinted on her, right? If Broly kind of imprinted on her, if Paragus ever tried to push her around or be violent towards her or anything like that, Broly would mess him up. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. He he would lose the other eye too. Oh yeah, he yeah he'd be a blind saying. There you go. Uh, Vulcan <laughs> then asks, thoughts on the name of Martial Spirit Human Transformation. I like that one. I think I told you this the last time uh, we did we did the roundtable. Um, Vulcan, I I like Martial Spirit form. Um, it's uh it it, it it it's good and it kind of keys into that aspect of it being a uh finding um finding that 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 sort of zen uh balance uh when it comes through through um through study and and hard work as opposed to being something like ultra instinct that is you know because of the name implied to be a a purely instinctual concept you know Hmm. so i like i like martial spirit 
Yeah, no, it's a good name. Solid name, Vulcan. No. Thank you. Yeah. All right, with that, we are done with the round table for another week. Thank you all so much for joining us today. It's been really good Thank to you. share my birthday with you all. Thank you so much, Sophie and Hav, for your hard work as well. Yeah. Yay. And, Thank you. And the true we... birthday were the friends we shared. Exactly. So be sure, everybody, to enjoy uh, the finale of Freezer Turned Good coming on Saturday. It's a very good one, and Travis done some very good work for the thumbnail. It's going to oh, be very, yeah. very good. It's going to be very, very good. But just It's going to be great. <laughs> look forward to that, and I hope you all take care. Stay safe out there, and uh, just look after yourselves, everyone. And again, thank you all so much for the support. It is really appreciated. Take care, everybody. Have a good night and a good rest of your day, wherever you are. Take care. Bye.